Hi everyone, my name is Melissa Christina Marquez and I'm a PhD student at Curtin University in Perth, Western Australia. Now today I'm going to be presenting how to be a shark in an ocean of sardines. But first, a little bit about myself. So I wear a lot of hats. I'm a marine biologist who studies sharks, a science communicator, an educator, a TEDx speaker, a TV presenter. You might have seen me on Shark Week uh, either in 2018 or 2019. I'm a podcast host, uh, the host of Conciencia Azul. A business owner, I own the Fins United Initiative as well as Pins United and the Etsy shop Ecos Marinos. And I'm also an author. Um, my books will be out with Scholastic in 2021. So I've done a lot of things, and most of what I've learned from has actually come from Google searches, like seriously, um, but also my own experiences with sharks, as well as experiences from others that don't include sharks. <laughs> but it's allowed me to curate a pretty successful personal brand, which has actually opened up quite a lot of doors. Now, most people think that a personal brand is something only quote unquote big names do. And this isn't just something that celebrities or entrepreneurs who own their own businesses do. They can actually be the sort of like secret sauce that makes you stand out in a stack of resumes. Now, if you don't develop your own brand, others are going to do it for you. It's kind of how sharks have a bad rep because they don't have their own voice to defend themselves. So don't be like sharks and speak up for yourself. Developing your own personal brand is the proactive way of controlling your career development and how you are perceived in the marketplace. A strong personal brand also impacts your ability to get the right jobs or promotions and increases your ability to attract talent. And at the end of it, capital. So how exactly do you find your personal brand? Will you identify your strengths and what makes you unique? Similar to how not all sharks hunt or live the same way, you need to embrace your differences. What makes you special? Think about the characteristics and strengths you've built in your career or schooling. If you're stuck, think about one area where everyone says you excel, like, wow, you're really good at math or you're really good at science communication and talking to people over Instagram or Twitter, really personable, stuff like that. And if you're still stuck, well, Ask others to help you out. Now, have you figured out what you're good at? Think you have something to say? Now, how are you going to say it? You need to build a website. That's actually my biggest kind of like takeaway is build some sort of platform, sometimes a website, sometimes a social media outlet to create your own virtual platform. and. Your website can be a variation of your own name so people can very easily be able to find you. The same goes for Twitter handles or for Instagram handles. I find that is the best way for someone to be able to easily Google you and find all of your handles. Now, you're going to need those social media accounts to represent your band brand and share your voice as well. So share your knowledge by helping others through you can do videos through YouTube social media, or writing both online and offline. This is where you prove that you know your stuff and you actually gain exposure from doing so. Now you won't be the first one to share your story, but you need to remember that you are the only one sharing your story. There are hundreds of people that are out there doing science communication or talking about their personal brand or putting themselves out there being like, hey, you need to work with me and these are the reasons why. But when sharing information, you need to find your own style. There's tons out there that you might want to emulate, but if it doesn't speak true to you, why are you going to do it? You want to find your own Again, secret sauce. And you don't have to do what everyone else is doing. In fact, following the crowd is going to make it difficult for you and your brand to stand out amongst others. Very similar to kind of how fish schooling together in the same exact area. They're doing the same thing. So it actually confuses predators like sharks to figure out who's that special one that they're going to pick out, which in that case isn't the best way. But in general, you want to stand out from the school of fish because you want to say, hey, look at me. This is how I'm special. So use your style, your uniqueness, your differences to attract the audience that you desire.
For example, me, I'm a Latina marine biologist who studies sharks. There's not that much of us out there. There's a few, but not that many, and especially not on social media. So I use that to kind of attract people to my platform. I talk about sharks. I talk about the cultural pressures that I dealt with when I was growing up. I talk about being a Latina in the sciences and how difficult that has been, but also how rewarding it has been as well. So there's many different avenues that I get to choose through with my audience that I get to quote unquote capitalize on because it's my unique story and no one else has that. So create your own new set of footprints for other people to follow. Now it's important to have a clear picture of your personal and your professional goals, both short-term and long-term. They are two different things, those personal and professional goals. And that means you gotta set up some priorities. Now sharks have priorities too. Eating and reproducing are two really good examples of them. And they're even better examples because one of them is short-term, aka eating all of the time to live, and reproducing is a long-term goal because they wanna pass on their genes. So everyone has to have goals in mind, and that's gonna help you identify the most important things to spend your time on and have something to align new projects with. That's gonna be basically your morals and values. So you have those morals and values, you have those goals set in place, then you see, all right, of the opportunities that are coming my way, what lines up with those goals and values that I already have set in place? What says yes? that will further my goals and ambitions, and what says no, it's cool, but doesn't really align with my vision. It'll make it a lot easier for you to say yes or no to projects that come up on your horizon. Now, you wanna use those values and priorities as a compass that guides you in your actions and your decision-making, and that's gonna ensure that you stay on track. Don't get me wrong, I 100% know the itch to be a part of every cool opportunity that comes your way, but saying no is gonna help you, not only for your mental health and also keeping things on track, but it's also gonna make sure that you don't burn out, and that is the last thing you wanna do. So again, set those short-term and those long-term goals, keep in mind what it is that you wanna do, and don't be afraid to say no to some things, even in the beginning. All right, so you may be wondering, all right, I've done all this work, I've got a vision, I've got a voice, I have something I wanna share, an idea, a voice that I wanna put out on a platform, but is anyone actually gonna follow me? Is anyone gonna see me in these sea of sardines, of these fish that kind of look all alike at first glance? And you may be suffering from something that's called imposter syndrome. And imposter syndrome is this phenomenon where you have trouble internalizing and realizing your own successes. Now, how many of you guys deal with this? Obviously, I can't see you, so I don't know if you're raising your hand or if you're nodding your heads, but I'll give you a little secret. I suffer from it. In fact, a lot of people suffer from it. And instead of seeing your quote unquote wins as a product of your own personal hard work and talent, you usually end up attributing them to some sort of force outside like luck or opportune timing. Who hasn't done that before, right? I mean, I've definitely done that before. But you aren't alone. Everyone feels like an imposter from time to time. Like you, they think that the next person is doing better than them or that everyone is doing better than them and they're gonna realize, oh, you're an outsider. You don't actually know what you're talking about. But a lot of people feel this way and oftentimes we don't share how we feel because we're worried that whoever it is that we are talking to about this feeling is actually gonna come out and be like, oh, no, yeah, you are a fraud. I've never heard that happening by the way, but that is how a lot of us feel. And it's hard to accept praise for your accomplishments when you feel like you don't deserve it. Like you were just lucky or worse that anyone could have done exactly what you are doing, but that's not true. You did the task the only way you could have done it and applied your unique knowledge and skills to get it done. No one else is you. No one has lived your life. So you have gotten to where you are. You are going to get where you were going because you are uniquely you and no one can take that away from you. So it isn't easy, but reflection and meditation can actually help you get in the right headspace. Now it's hard to feel like 
you don't deserve the things you accomplished, when you realize how much value you provide in someone's life. Now, if you're already on social media and you've already put up a couple of posts, sometimes people will actually comment and say, hey, thank you for sharing this experience. It's really helped me. And even if you don't think that you're not worthy of admiration, that's not how the person you helped feels. If someone tells you how much they love your work or how much it's helped them, accept it. You may have possibly, positively affected them in several ways, and that's not something that should be taken lightly. They are taking time out of their day to tell you how awesome they basically think you are, and nobody does that anymore, really, unless they truly, truly feel like their comment is going to help you in some way, or if they truly feel like you have helped them. So when someone says, hey, you're doing awesome, thank them for it because that is an amazing feeling and it's also one of those things where you can go back to those comments and reread them when you're having one of those imposter syndrome days that you're just like oh my god i feel really just full of self-doubt i don't know what i'm doing that's a perfect time to go back to those comments and reflect and be like no wait I do know what I'm doing and I am helping people by spreading these ideas, by spreading my voice and giving other people platforms to talk about their ideas and life experiences as well. Now, I got this tidbit of advice a few years ago and I don't remember who it was that told me, but I'm so glad that they told me and I've always tell people this as well. I actually take screenshots um, of positive comments that people leave me and I put them in a folder and it's a, literally just a folder that says nice things. And anytime I feel down, I just go into that folder and I read those comments. Now it can sound a little vain to some people, but honestly, it's just so helpful to know that you've got people out there that are supporting you, not just your friends and families, but sometimes complete strangers that live on the other side of the world are out there rooting for you, rooting for your voice, your journey. And that's just so comforting sometimes. So, that might help you as well. Uh, if you end up making a nice things folder, definitely let me know. Now there are downsides to media. Yeah, it can bring about inspiration, but also leave one feeling worse as we do. Probably one of the worst things that uh, social media has kind of done nowadays is compare ourselves to others. And the truth is, look, there are going to be people that might be better than you. And I'm not saying better than you as a person or anything like that, but they might just be more experienced in your field. Um, they might have a few more years under their belt. And there's nothing wrong with that. It is completely okay. But instead of using that to make yourself feel bad, use their work to make yours better. And for example, I use other people's work as motivation to be better, to learn more, to open up my perspective and learn about things I hadn't thought about learning before. Now, one big way that sharks have kind of helped me overcome my imposter syndrome is realizing that sharks do not compare themselves to other sharks. Trust me, a great white shark is not sitting there being like, hmm, am I actually that great or am I just a so-so shark? No. They just are. They can peacefully coexist with one other sharks in the same exact environment, each serving their own unique purpose. And that gives me the confidence to perform my best when I don't feel like it. Everyone has a role to play in the story of their life. And there are other ways to tell your story. For example, to employers through your CV or your resume. Now, sort of how we have fact sheets for sharks that tell us everything we know about they, then, resumes act like a fact sheet for everything a potential employer or a collaborator or a professor or supervisor needs to know about you. And there are many tips out there to let you know how to make yours stand out. And I'm just going to reiterate a few of them because, honestly, there's so much good information out there. Quick Google will help you kind of pad your resume into the tip, tip, top shape. A few good rules are keeping it simple. You want to put the most recent and the most relevant information at the top. You don't want to put everything on there, of course. Uh, design for skimmability. A lot of people only have a few seconds to really look over your resume, so you want the big headers to kind of pop out. Use keywords. Uh, in this day and age of technology, 
when a job is asking for specific words, you want to put those in that resume because that is what the computer is going to pick up and pick your pile, your resume out of the pile and be like, yep, they use those keywords. We're going to look at this a little bit further. Ditch that references available upon request at the bottom. Yes, everyone knows you are going to have references. So either list them or don't list them and put them in the body of the email or cover letter that you end up sending to an employer, to a supervisor, to a professor. And then of course, proofread, proofread, and proofread. Make sure there are no spelling mistakes in there whatsoever. And that includes in naming of your file. I have gotten so many resumes of just a mash of keys, which is really funny. Um, but also do remember that sometimes people save those and they're not gonna know what ASDFGHTVB is. <laughs> you wanna put it as for example, for my resumes, I always put my initials, so MCM, underscore resume or CV, underscore, and then the year. And sometimes I either put marine bio or something else at the end, so then people kind of know what it is that file is specifically looking at. Now, a lot of people also ask, Melissa, how do you make your resume stand out? And one of them is actually um, through a program, it's free, called Canva. And I'll give you a quick glance of mine. Uh, in the next slide. So here's an example um, that you can kind of see right there. So it's quick and easy. I've got my experience right at the top with my education over to the side because everyone knows, all right, you've got some education, but they really want to see what it is that you are spending your time doing. Um, really quick bullet points, kind of it reiterating what it is that I do. Um, big letters of makes it easy to kind of skim through all right she's been a writer she's a founder of something she's been a social media consultant an intern and then i've got my presentations towards the back as well uh, a few little drawings here and there because i do uh, shark drawings as well do uh, science art or sci art as some people know it and then to kind of make things pop a little bit more uh, in the first picture as you can see which is as seen in shows some of the places that I've actually been featured in. And that's a lot better than just listing a bunch of, uh, what do you call it, uh, avenues. Just, you know, it's, it's a list, it kind of gets boring. So this is something different. They see it pop and it kind of gets them like, oh, wait, Scholastic, TEDx, Forbes, uh, Discovery Channel, BBC, they see that right off the bat. And they're like, all right, those are some big names. Let's delve a little bit deeper into her. And if you can't figure out how to tell your whole story on one page, which is what the resume is, so your resume is one page, most relevant and recent information in regards to the job or the opportunity you're applying for, whereas the CV is kind of your whole list of everything that you've done in regards to that kind of field. Say you want to say a little bit more of what you're doing. Well, if you want to be able to include some visual examples of your work or you can't tell your whole story in one page, which trust me, as you get on in years, it becomes a little bit harder. Instead, try having your resume cover everything and just cover the most important details on that document and include a link then to your personal website. And that's what I actually do at the end of my resume. I actually have my website there. And it's a hyperlink, so if it's on a PDF, it'll take them straight to that, as well as a media uh, link that I have for people to see me on what I've done in regards to the media. And it takes them straight there, or you just have the link there and people can type it in if they're interested in learning more about you. And then you can go into more detail without having to put everything on that one page. Um, so yeah, it allows you to have more information there to dive into what makes you an ideal candidate for that opportunity. And it's great. A lot of people now use their computers for mostly everything. So if they have a better chance of getting to know you through a website that's catchy, that's not so much in your face, but it's clean and tidy and professional, that's definitely what people are gonna really, really enjoy. So if you haven't thought of setting up a personal website, do think about it, especially on free hosts such as Weebly or Wix um, are two big ones that a lot of people use as well as Squarespace. So yeah, that's a really good way of kind of setting yourself apart as well. Now sharks have a lot to teach us, not only about themselves and their importance in the ecosystem, but also about our very own rules in our lives. 
And sharks don't wait around for someone else to help them make a name of themselves. They stand out naturally because that is who they were born to be. There are over 500 different species of sharks. <laughs> Did you know that? Uh, and each of them has a unique role to play in their respective habitat. They're portrayed as these lonesome, fearsome creatures, but some species are actually quite social and even have quote-unquote friends. So while there is some competition between individuals, naturally, they are actually known to cooperate together for a common goal. Collaboration over competition is my motto, and that and many other lessons I've shared with you today are what sharks have taught me in my time of studying them, as well as some of their biological secrets as well. And I hope that what I've told you today inspires you to be the shark that we all have inside of us, fiercely confident with themselves and ready to take on the world. Good luck with your individual journeys, everyone. Uh, if you have any further questions, I'll be here. Uh, this is some of my contact information, so feel free to reach out to me uh, and ask anything that you need to ask. And thanks for your time and good luck.